Okay, and we are on live. We are back with episode three. We skipped a month because too many things happened. I am once again Joe Ryder Kicknell, complete with my co-host. Hey, everybody. It's, it's DJ K, K, DJ Clax, coming to you from the ICT as usual. How's it going? Once again, we have no idea what these initials actually mean. <laughs> Because nobody ever asked. <laughs> but we are here to talk about Vanguard. It is a two-part special. Uh, the next time we are here to talk about in this episode, we review the first two clans for the new release set, uh, Blue Armada Storm Set 8, discuss teams, and discuss the stand-up cup. And I will be back with you with actually two guys from my own local, so they can tell you how much I actually suck at this game. Oh, are you pretty bad? I'm actually was the top of my store, and then these guys immigrated, so now I'm top two, top three. I'm uh, actually yeah. not a horrible player, but I can get better. You gotta love that, man. Okay. Well, it's all, it's all about competition, man. It's all about the thrill of competition, about striving to get better. This is true, and I was the very first to recognize Big Fish and Little Pond Syndrome before any of my store uh, store was. Well, very cool. That was a very rude awakening for them. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. We're great. We're great. And then, God, we suck. Yeah. um, I know the feeling. Trust me on that one. All right. First, stand-up cup. I didn't make it. I piloted Stern, got third. I got gridlocked in tops and got knocked out. Oh, wonderful. Um, Let's see. I took... uh part of my team to uh, Kansas City for regionals there. Shout out to Spanky Scarshot, by the way. Spanky's, a, Spanky's my boy. Um, we uh, we brought a team of uh, four people up there. Um, and, of course, I accompanied them. And uh, we had two guys move to top eight. Um, then, let's see, uh, one of them got knocked out in round two of single elimination. And one of our guys made it to finals and won. Yeah. Awesome. One of, one of my guys uh, actually topped Kansas City Regionals and Bushy Road sending him to Florida for a nice little vacation. Him and his uh, him and some members of his family, I assume. Nice. Yep, I'm I'm proud of him. He was uh, he was definitely the guy if I had to pick between the four I brought would have won. But at the same time, you know, I'm happy it was him because he's he's really cool, really easygoing, really humble, and. Uh, Easy to, to just get along with. He he's very much an asset to the team. Very, what did he run? Very happy to have him. Uh, he ran uh, Royal MLV. Okay, so one of the main decks you'd expect. Yeah, but he he has his own little twist on it. Okay. Um, if you go to the uh, the website for my team, team three one six dot wordpress dot com, shameless plug. Um, I We're posted, all about shameless plugs. Don't worry. <laughs> I posted a uh, a review of his deck list. So if all y'all fools want a deck list after which is uh, come on in and uh, you know you can you can net deck all you want, but uh, you know three one six men. I say it's okay. I saw a dope deck actually at my locals that did pretty well by one of the new guys that started showing up, and it's Eclipse. A Dodie Eclipse deck. And he runs the Eclipse up to grade two for the sole fact that the ride chain thins out the deck to where he can hit Dote easier. Interesting. There she is. I didn't expect that. I'm sitting there looking at it like, it's Dote. And then he, like, turns over his Vanguard because I wasn't paying attention to the opening of the match. (laughs) Because I'm running the – I judge the events now. I'm assistant judge. We – the old guy – Plays too much Friday Night Magic and never shows up on time. Oh, wonderful. So, I'm doing it. Magic. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, there's that. And I sat there's like, Amber Dragon Nom, but I saw you running. Is this the one? I was like, no, it's Eclipse. Uh, Just to grade two, so I can make a 20k column with the grade two. And uh, I run Dota everywhere else. Like, oh, that's new. Yeah, um, okay. First of all, am I like the only person in the world who pronounces it Doty? Like, I, I went to Kent City and everybody's like, yeah, Dote this, Dote that. I'm like, Do- oh, Doty? They're like, yeah, Dote. And I was like, oh. I say Doty because okay. it's my aunt's name. I actually have uh, aunt Doty. Interesting. Is she a large red dragon with guns? Because if so, if so I would totally like to be adopted. 
We will never get into that. So I'm assuming that she does at least have four arms with guns in all of them. Moving aside from my family. Yes. Um, so yeah, um, he ran Royal MLB, like I said, team316.wordpress.com for all you net deckers. Um, we had one guy make it to top four. Um, there was a situation, and uh, he was removed from the tournament. And otherwise, my other two uh, teammates got uh, made one and three. And, uh, you know, one of them, you know, was pretty happy with his performance. The other one got a little salty. Um, and then I played in a uh, side event for a win a box. I, uh, I two won to Spike Brothers build, lost to, uh, I think, a Pale Moon build. And then I ended up back against the Spike Brothers guy, and he ended up taking me 2-1. Because um, I told him game one, he was, I was just like, you know, one of these games I, I beat you by trigger sacking. So um, if we play again, you're probably going to win. And uh, he did. Trigger sacking. Yep, trigger sacking. Well, and I've been, I've been getting sacked a lot lately uh, with uh, one of my buddies moved next door to me. And we've been playing a lot. He just he jumped on the Aqua Force bandwagon. More on that a little later. But um, he, oh, yeah. he sacked me for uh, four damage yesterday when I was at two. Because I no guarded. And, you know, he he was on a Maelstrom with the extra crit. And he double trigger sacks. I'm just like, well, that's Vanguard. So, welcome to Vanguard. As put by my good friend Scott Gaines, Vanguard, Cardfight Vanguard, UFS is retarded little cousin. Yep. Shout out to USS because that game is phenomenal and I still want to learn to I want to get back into playing it because I just have a Chun-Li deck and I can't find it. I said <laughs> we'll work out something and you'll get a crap ton of promos from me. That would be amazing. I mean literally a crap ton. I have three boxes of an open promo stack sitting in my room right in front of me. Oh dear God. Yeah, do you want? <laughs> do you want... You actually uh, can get some character cards in there, too, by the way. Some what? You actually do get character cards sometimes in those promo packs, by the way. Yeah, I, I've heard. It's it's pretty awesome. I think it's Mature, Vice, Iori, Mr. Karate, and Clark. Oh, you have uh, you have uh, KOF promos. Yes, they are KOF promos. I love King of Fighters. I'm so bad at it. And I love King of Fighters. All right, on to team events. Uh, team event. My store did not do team events. We actually, team event kind of tra- coincided with Blue Storm Sneak Peek. Blue Storm Sneak Peek happened instead. Huh. Um, we could not make it to the neighboring stores in time, despite the fact that I ran a very quick tournament. Yep. We only had one form of shenanigans, which was actually my thing, because I was still assistant judge. We had a mat on the die roll. I won mm-hmm. the die roll. I asked everybody that played. I asked all eight players. Only one player said nay, so I went to the head judge. Head judge was like, you get the mat. Uh, yeah, I, uh, if I pay to be in the sneak peek and I get it in a die roll, um, I'll typically, you know, keep it. <laughs> but only if I pay to play. I did pay to um, play. Um, yeah. Plus, it was a Dayusha mat. Everybody knew I really wanted the Dayusha mat. Yeah, I, I wanted it, too. We had only one guy say nay. He was in tops, though. But, you know, I can understand him saying nay in case he didn't win it. So, I, like I said, I deferred to my head judge, and head judge gave me the mat. So, it was all good in the long run. I hear you. But, um, yeah, I'm the, I'm the head judge in my at my regional, and nobody ever really raises a... Uh, a question if it happens randomly because typically everybody watches the random. As a matter of fact, the store owner runs the random, so no biggie there. If I get rolled in the random and I didn't pay to play, though, I pass it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of sucks, though, because uh, we're one of the stores that gets approved for uh, larger sneak peeks. Nice. And, um... Ah! The chair just uh, popped on me. Uh, the chair is apparently broken and I didn't know that. Um... Uh, but yeah, we we get a fruit for the larger sneak peeks, and uh, between all eight mats, um, you know, twenty two people, eight mats, and I couldn't even roll the random. So, yeah, such is life in Moscow. Oof. Yeah, this chair's broken, and I totally just got caught by it. Blooper reel. 
Anyway. Oh, no, we're keeping that in. So we, I hope so. I, I truly hope so. You assume I do any editing to this show outside of sticking the opening and ending theme on there. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it was a fun sneak peek. Interestingly enough, uh, we had enough for 32. Uh, the store owners, since we didn't have 32, after the draft, sold the packs. We had one guy buy up pretty much all the remaining packs, spent a couple hundred, and out of all the packs in the store, including the draft packs, including the uh, the leftovers after the draft, there was one Dayusha pulled. One. Yes, that was an incredibly hard thing to pull. I bought six boxes. Uh, I pulled two. And I pulled two zeals. Then I called my neighboring store, which my uh, the new guys, which will be on the next episode discussing uh, Tachikaze and Neonectar. Uh, I immediately called that store and was like, "Do you guys pull two and uh, two days?" She's like, "Yeah, all right, I'm on my way." Nice. So that day I had a full Zeal deck, and I had a full Dayusha deck. Nice. And I actually played in my locals with my zeal, despite be minusing one zeal, and swept the tournament with that thing, because zeal is dumb. Yep, yes it is. So, yeah, oh, speaking of uh, Naruto card game, on a quick side note, somebody in the North American Vanguard group just posted a bunch of pictures of uh, Nazi selling, and I'll send you one. Now, of course, you guys can't see this, but um, he can, so... There you go. Anyway, yeah, those are rather new. But, um, yeah, it, Dayusha, I don't understand why it's such a hard pull. I mean, it's it's not even the big boss of the set, and yet he's the hard pull. I think it's because he's actually the first card of the set, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the reason. I mean, no it'd be idea. a very lame reason, but it may be the reason nonetheless. Mm, yeah, well, like I said, could, anything could happen. Um, yeah. But either way, um, I have, uh, the guy who I told you who jumped on the Aqua Force bandwagon now decides the bandwagon doesn't have enough room for him, and he's gonna jump on the, uh, for him it's not technically a bandwagon because he's been preparing for it on and off. Like, he bought, bought some Diamond Aces when they were, you know, dirt cheap in preparation for it. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna jump on the, uh, Zeal Dayusha wagon. I think those are going to go back down because people were probably not going to see Dimension Plays probably till, and this is me fortune telling because there is no mention of set 13 or 14 even in the works Yeah. at the moment, but that would be my best guess is when we will see any remote hint of D-Police coming back. Yeah. If well, even it, that. It'll depend on if... Um, if Bushy decides to throw uh, Caesar into uh, Link into Joker. the shell again, into Link Joker, which I honestly think they should. I want we'll to see them update his costume design finally. We'll just say this much. The chances of d Police coming back are right up there with Grand Blue and uh, Mega Colony at this point. Well, and both of those clans are really broken. If they continue with them, they will be popping. I mean, that's just honest truth. I know. They're people just don't understand that. Yeah, nobody understands those clans. I've been telling people since set one that Mega Colony is busted. And what happened? Kansas City Regional, somebody goes to the top four with Mega Colony. The only reason Mega Colony doesn't do anything is because they still have their natural predators and the Nova Grapplers. Yeah, and, um, and if you, uh, if you well, follow the, the, the theming at all in the D-Police, because the D-Police are, you know, the Sentai and the Common Riders and... Everyone else, and the mega colony is shocker, basically. And on top of that, we also run as many stands. Not as good as stands, but we run as many stands as uh, Nova Grap. Yeah. After all, we were nice enough to give them Space Sheriff Gavin. I mean, twin later. Let me know when that goes over your head, because, you know, I'll do Gavin references for the life of me. Yep, yep. Gavin is awesome. Except for that last movie. That was. Was it bad? It was like watching Kamen Rider the first. I like that movie, though. The movie didn't actually start for me until Kenji Oba actually appeared in the movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and then Shider and Sharavan, if I'm saying their names right, they they were there for the sake of being there. 
Okay, yeah. but anyways, team of N. Team of N. Yes. Um, and I, I rather like the team format. Um, I wish that it was a little bit different. Um, I, I wish that everything wasn't set in stone for every game because the appeal of the team format and the TV show to me was the fact that, you know, you can change things up as you go, kind of counterpick and uh, strategize, but you don't have room to do that with uh, the current team format. Um, I mean, it's fun. It's fun to judge. And actually, for my finals, I ran it uh, I ran it TV show style at the player's request. But, um, you know, it's just... Uh, I don't, I don't really, I'm not feeling it, you know? Like I said, we, mine was non-existent because we were doing Blue Storm Armada Sneak Peek. Well, so. and you guys really missed out. Well, on top of that, my whole thing is only, my play group's only 12 people, so it would just be three teams, or four yeah. teams going at each other. So it's an instant cut to top four. Uh-huh. Well, and uh, we ended up having enough, just enough teams, literally one team enough um, that we had to run Swiss. Um, it caused some issues with some of the players who didn't understand no matter, no matter what they did, they were going to play against somebody that they played against before. But, um, I mean, you know, what do you want me to do? You know, there's five teams. Yeah. yeah. So. When you have a low amount of players, uh, elimination is not the pro-choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, you know, like I said, I was sticking to the format, to the T, with, of course, the exception of the last round, like I said, because that's the round where it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, they asked me to run it TV show style. I'm like, you know, everybody's cool with it. You guys are cool. Both teams are cool. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll run it that way. So, you know, we, we had a, a really hype final round. Yeah, it was it was cool. Now we got that out of the way, we will go into our set review. We will be covering the patron team of the show since we are called Total Justice Gaming. We bring you, I bring, we talk about the game, team of justice. Yes. Giant justice. robots, giant aliens, and cute girls in what looks like a Windows 8 pod. Well, and, and chicks dig giant robots, so it all works out. My sister does. Your sister sounds cool. Yeah, Jane loves giant robots so much that she's over in Japan. Oh, dear God. Okay. That's, um, that's pretty damn cool. Yes. Yeah. Little sister aside, uh, we'll just start off with the big boss himself, Ultimate Dayusha, the cross ride. Ah, uh, cross ride Yes. I love it. Okay, aside from the fact that we could put a Power Rangers theme song, the Power Rangers Megazord theme song behind him when he rides. In fact, you saw that video? There are like several videos of that. I think there's one of it, him doing it against Goki and one of him doing it against Ren. The Goki video is the one I've seen the most. Um, it's phenomenal. I mean, I I watch that before I go to bed. So, yeah. I just I need that little extra boost of epic. And it's quite epic. Thank God they're using the wrong Wasserman's Ron Wasserman song at the very least. Yeah, they they're using Wasserman's theme and there is nothing more appropriate than Wasserman's theme for that. Unless they themselves contacted him and asked him to do one because he's been known to do that from time to time. That would um, be awesome. Well, and he's uh he's doing part of the soundtrack for the MMPR fan film which uh, is another subject entirely, but um, he's doing that. He, uh, I mean, he actually cares about the fan base, which is pretty cool. But anyway, um, Team Justice. Justice Gaming, Dayusha, Giant Robots and Chicks, and yes. All right, so Dayusha, he's our limit breaker. He's a static link break, which is actually something we don't see too often. We will probably be seeing it more often as we go down the road, but there's actually no cause outside of having to have... Three or more dimensional robo unit cards with dimensional robo in the name in the soul. And then it's a static 2000. And while swinging, well, no, you, critical you misread one. that a little bit. Oh, wait, I did. Yeah. During the turn, he gets plus 2000, plus one crit for having three D, uh, D robos. 
And if he has super dimensional di- robo Daisha, he gets plus 2k. So just for writing the chain properly, just for cross writing properly, you get an extra 14 plus one crit just for him existing. And that is insane in this format. It is, and it's costless. Well, yeah. And especially in a format where, um, you know, MLB is swinging out with, you know, 20, 30,000 columns for free with two crits every turn in a, in a format where you're seeing, you know, 844 trigger lineups, uh, 8 crit, 4 stand, or, or 12 crit if at all possible. I mean, it's it's insane to have a Vanguard that's just, you know, I exist. I am, oh, wait, hold on, he's an 11k base, so he's 15 and one, two crit just existing on the Vanguard circle, which means that, um, I mean, 15 just sitting there, he he beats, first of all, he beats Doty. He beats MLB all day, every day. He beats um, every major boss Vanguard in the game at 15k. I mean, not to mention, you know, 15k, you throw an 8k boost on that, you've got these ridiculous columns that just hit magic numbers free all day free because in total justice gaming we believe in magic numbers yeah you know i i'm not really a fan of the term but at the end of the day it's it makes sense and it gets the job done yeah i mean the theory behind it is solid i I like the theory behind magic numbers it makes perfect sense it's a way you can predict your guards but same time it's just this really ridiculous yeah hmm but there is a reason why this is the chief executive officer of the entire Dimension Police Task Force. Oh, it's because he shows up, he ruins your day, and leaves and doesn't care. And then we talk about somebody who ruins your day quite possibly even more than Dayusha. Galactic Beast Zeal, or as like I like to call him, oh my god, Zeton. Yep, all day. Limit Break 4, he's also a ride chain, but he sits at a mirror 11k, which you get the ride chain going off, but for Counter Blast 2, he powers your opponent's vanguard for minus 5,000, meaning the mighty cross rides that are out there go down to a mere 6,000 or 5,000. Yeah. Well, uh, aren't most cross rides 11k bases? They are eleven K bases, so they're sitting at those very strong generic blank grade zeros or low end grade ones. Yeah. So I mean and, and Zeal has a skill that I think is really slept on, along with uh Murakumo's uh Murakumo skill that reduces uh reduces guards, I believe. Or was it does it also there's there's a boss monster in Murakumo that reduces some stat that in my set five um, my set five review video I I called for a Doty killer but nobody's using it mm. so um, I'll let you know about the Doty killer I didn't actually go up against my guy that does runs Eclipse Doty but uh, this thing totally trashed Vermilion Kaiser it was not even a close game yeah um, and Kaiser I think will. Uh, Will be kind of wallowing in the mid the uh, mid tier until they get the cross ride, which is uh, just next month. So that's not yeah. a long time. Yeah, but until then, Narukami will probably be mid tier, and I'm, I'm calling it, guys. You can you can quote me on it. I don't care. You can bring it back up in a month, but until then, I'm standing firm with you know Narukami is in mid tier until they get the cross ride because oh, okay. cross ride without cross rides. Or something similar, you just don't hardly survive in this format. With the exception, of course, of my boys in the Mecha Colony. Because, uh, yeah. They're so anti-meta. Yeah, it's it's like, you know, you can either leave these units on the board to not do anything, or you can retire them and lose hand for it. Please don't hit stands. <laughs> yeah, just don't hit stands. <laughs> because if you hit stands, oops... So anyways, he is rather scary. He, If you ride him on the grade 2, he already minuses your opponent statically for 3,000. His limber break goes off, that's another 5,000. So you're nerfing 
things for 8,000 on your initial t- ride turn. And he's only counter blast two for his limit break. So if it goes anything beyond that, they're still looking at getting uh, another minus 5,000 in their face. He is not somebody I want to sit there and look for. And on top of that, he's counter blast. And in the deck that Zeal runs, you don't counter blast for anything but Zeal. Yeah. Um, when, when you don't have to, uh, when you don't have to, uh, what's the word? Uh, when you don't have to manage your counter blast like that, it becomes a lot easier to run a deck like that. Um, Enigma and Storm deck? Yeah. It becomes a lot easier when you're not having to manage counter blasts like, for example, Mega Colony, which is their big weakness, honestly. But, um, yeah, a deck like that where the only counter blast you have is, uh, is the boss monster, then it gets really easy. All right, moving right down the list. Operator Girl Mika. Some of my guys kept saying, Mika, I just wanted to slap that. Uh, 9,000 power, Vanguard or Rear Guard ability of Counter Blast 2. When this, per, when Mika, uh, Mika's attack hits, if you have a deep police Vanguard, you can pay the cost. If you do, draw a card. It pl- gives pressure to the opponent, causing them to want to block. Otherwise, you get a free card. Or, in your case, a free shield. Yes, sir. Very good card. Again, you put it, you put, I would put this in the Dayusha deck, which it is in mine, because she's the only card outside of Die Lander that you need to be counterblasting for. Yeah, well, and I feel like, um, while it's a great effect in Deep Lease and Draw Power is something they had, for the cost, she's just way too pricey. Uh, a counter blast two to draw one. Um, the, doesn't Deep Police have a drop and draw yet? Um, yeah, quilt. Yeah. So why would you use this card, which requires you to counter blast two, and you can only do it on hit when instead you can just run something that says drop and draw? You know, uh, shield it's, pressure to make them waste shields. Yes, but at the same time, when you're running a clan that right now. Um, we had just mentioned that, you know, Zeal's the one that's going to be counterblasting. You need to be saving those counterblasts for Zeal. You need to be saving those counterblasts for anything else other than No, drawing no, she doesn't go in Zeal. She goes in Dayusha. Yeah, so, okay, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see going in Dayusha. No, I don't run her in Zeal. I run her in Dayusha. It's, she's my three of in Dayusha. See, and that makes, uh, that makes a bit more sense to me. Um... To run it in Dayusha, because running it in Zeal would just be silly. And on top of that, it's on hit, and you have to counter blast. You don't have to counter blast, then hit, which is always a better thing. Yeah, it's it's that little bit of wording makes it help, or it makes it a little easier to use. Moving right uh, along. Because, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I mean, like, you just, you don't have to, you know, cross your fingers, because at the end of the day, even if she doesn't hit, just because of her effect, your opponent's going to be like, oh, dear God, I don't want them to draw, so I'm going to guard way more than I need to. You know, that That's how I see that card. Uh, but I do like her because she does apply that extra bit of pressure to get rid of the card in her hand. Yeah, but but it's, it's artificial pressure. I mean, she's she's 9K base. So, you know, that's, that's just but the way But, you know, I I'm starting it. to see the format shift to those 9K bases away from the 10Ks. Well, it's because every clan gets one or two good 10Ks, and then everything else is a 9K with a ridiculous effect. And that's just, that's the status quo, because, well, once again, you know, in a format where it's just like, oh, hey, I'm a cross ride, good game. It's, that's the format. You need a bunch of effects rather than just raw power. Give it a couple power, months, we'll totally remake that statement into, oh, I'm a break ride. Yeah. And a lot of my locals are already flipping out about the break rides. I'm like, eh, I'm like, chill, guys. It's like three months away. Unless you're playing Bermuda Triangle, because Bermuda Triangle gets cart cross rides in uh Two months. in the next in the in the next booster. So. All right, moving along. Dimensional Robo Die Dragon. Oh, good lord! I love this card. It's an instant four of in a Dayusha deck. Yes, sir. Ultimate. I, I when you mention a card, I I pull them up on uh on the wiki, so I can, uh... I'm just kind of at the actual official Cardfight Vanguard site. 
Uh, I just narrowed my search down to Blue Armada Storm and typed in search all relevant keywords that I mentioned, please. I'm going down the list. There you go. Well, and I'm, like I said, using the wiki. So, yes, also sir. Useful. Uh, Anyways, rear guard auto ability on the rear guard only. When this guy attacks, if you have a D Robo in the, as their vanguard, which is oh so easy to do in Daisha. He becomes a whopping 12k when he attacks. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't even look at this card as a 9k. He's a 12k. Period. He is. You're not, you're not going to drop him in any deck that doesn't use a D-Robo. There's no reason to do it at all. So. I mean, this is not even including the two or the one false dimensional Robo girl that's in there, but, you know, we'll get. she's not in this. She came out last set. But Dimensional Robo, Super Dimensional Robo Daily, use her in your D deck, in your D Robo deck. Mhm. Mm and it's just I don't I can't believe that D Police doesn't come up more often in the discussion about just ridiculous columns because it makes them for free, just so free. It is. It's so, so good. <laughs> it's so free. So free. All right, Enigman Cyclone. He is either your alternate to Storm, your backup to Dyusha, not ultimate, but super Dyusha, if you want to run something different. He runs the same theme as Enigma, and he's got to be 14, 14K or higher party with acting. If he is, you get to Sniper Rear Guard. Yeah. He and, hits. Uh, I'm not that really impressed with it, honestly. Uh, out of all the effects on Zeal, I think it's probably the most vanilla. I like, think he, like I said, I think he works as an alternate to Storm or maybe a backup to Super Dyusha, but he's, he's honestly a, a background. He's your off drop. Yeah, he's he's a uh, he's the he's the vanguard you ride if you don't get to your boss. So. You know, it's a matter of... Uh, He's a respectable 10K, and I was going to run him in my Storm deck, and then the promos came out with... Uh, what's the other Voltron-looking one that just came out as the promo for the Sneak Peek? Uh, Die Battle? Uh, no, uh, not Die Battler. It's uh, Ultimate... Cosmo something? Something I don't remember. I'm looking right now. I'm trying to find it. Grade 3. It's, I know it's a great three. It's just a matter of uh, which one is it. I don't remember. Either way, yeah, he's he's all right. Let me see if I can't find it. Named Cosmo, Ultimate, Blaster, Dragon, Overlord, Police. I don't know. I don't know. Darth Vader riding Dumbo. I don't and even know that. And it is ah Electro Star combination Cosmo great. Yeah, that big hand mouthful. Yes. Um, like I said, I was going to use uh Enigman Cyclone and then we got Electro then we got Cosmo Great and Cosmo Great pretty much does your rear guard duty, uh Cosmo Beak or Die I'm always gonna get Die Lander and Die Battle confused because I think they're like Twin cars, but uh, the grade one that he's also counterblast to gives somebody four thousand, so yeah. makes Nick Man makes Nick Man Cyclone totally obsolete. <laughs> yes, sir, it does. Um, it's pretty cool card. It is an awesome card artwork, though. But like I said, he's your off drop, and he's pretty much already obsolete because of other cards. Yeah, it's just you know something you can drop in. As an alternate, or you know, it's nothing special. It's just kind of there. No, and plus, rear guard sniping is not what Dimension Police do. Yeah, it's not something that they really do. So on to the next card, Android 18. Do you do what, mate? Okay, I'll call by a real name, Lady Justice. Ah, yes, Lady Justice. I, I just uh, call it as I see it. It's Android 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's in the face. She's throwing an energy blast. Blonde hair. Who's gonna argue with me on this? I'll argue with you just for the sake of arguing. <laughs> I will bring. We can have the entire Monty Python arguing clinic with you if I have to. Fine. I don't remember it. 
Yes, you do. I do. You've already ruined it. <laughs> uh, my bad. <laughs> um, Vanguard or Rear Guard auto ability. When she attacks, so long as you have a Vanguard, uh, Deep Police Vanguard, she gets 2,000 power while swinging. What is there to say about that? She's good. She's good. Uh, she's in my zero deck right. right now. I have sat there and bounced her back and forth between her and Miracle Beauty. Liking her more than Miracle Beauty and Zeal. Really? When uh, when did that? I uh, I actually, you know, I'm I'm kind of on the fence about her. I mean, she's uh, she's not great. She's not bad. Just uh, she's not special, really. If you I stay mean, her in front of Laurel, because Laurel should be in well, Laurel should be in all your Dimension Police decks. But she, he should really be in your Zeal deck for absurd swings. Yes. And if you stick her in front, you're still sitting there with a good 16-row column. Yep. It's uh, it's not terrible by any means. Just, you or know. you just swing with her in on your own because, once again, you're in a Zeal deck, so you're only going to be sitting there swinging 12K into their 3K, 12K into their 5K, 12K into their 6K all day long. All day. Uh, well, and like I said, not bad, not good, just kind of okay. I like it's, it. It's it's something for people to consider. I personally uh, would go either way on it. Um, but if they release a card that reminds me of Krillin and all for Deep Police, I'm building it. Nice. Yeah, I'm a bad person for making that joke. No, you're um, not, because you're absolutely <laughs> correct. Yeah. It just has to keep sacrificing itself for something, which is something we get in Tachikaze, but as long as the Krillin lookalike kills itself for something, we're good. Yep. So, that being said, let's let's, let's move on, shall we? Subterranean Beast Magma Lord. He is yes. the group's soul charge mega blast. Yep. Every clan needs one. And uh, this one is rather... At Land. least he's on theme with Zeal when you Mega Blast and Soul Blast. He, yeah, he but... is a minus 5,000, but it's never going to happen because he's the only thing in D Police, to my knowledge, that Soul Charges. Yeah, he's, uh, he's kind of bad, honestly. And if even your game's getting to turn, Blaster. we think he's great. 3, 8. If you're on turn 11, Vanguard, something's horribly wrong. Or horribly right. I have played 25, 30 game turns of Vanguard. 30 turn games of Vanguard that are freaking fun. How do you have a day that late in the game? Very carefully. Okay. <laughs> very, very carefully. Uh, yeah, there's not it, too much to say about him. No, no there isn't. It's just kind of math. Moving right along. Devourer of Planets Zeal, the Grade 2 Zeal, which has the best awesome name, letting you know how strong this guy is. He doesn't devour one planet, he devours two. The, well, it, Planets is uh, non-specific. It could be two, it could be more. And, and on top of that, he's doing Macross missiles at you. Yes, he is. Macross missiles all day. What are you doing in my Macross Devourer of Planets Zeal? So, yeah, he's he's kind of cool. Uh, you know, you do the cross ride, he gets your standard plus one thousand, and you know he minuses someone on ride, so it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, but definitely pretty... a four of in the zeal deck. If you're not doing it, you're wrong and don't need to be playing the well, game. And if you're ready a ride chain without four of everything except the grade one anyway, just stop playing a ride chain. You clearly don't understand how they work. It's true. We sound like we're being mean, but really, I mean, it's a ride chain. It well, elementary. you know, for for a game and a community that is typically so welcoming, uh, you will get the truth out of most people. And the truth is, if you don't understand that a ride chain should run four of everything, then stop using ride chains because they're not for uh, they're not for casuals anyway. I don't know. I was started off with a ride chain. I was pretty casual. I started off with Stern. Well, and my. Uh, my other deck, other than my Shadow MLB deck, is a Angel Feather Red Chain, so... Okay, now be honest, because I actually had that exact same deck. Are you using the Grade Zero, or are you using the other Grade Zero? I'm using Miracle Feather Nurse. Because I'm using Hope Child Terrell, just to keep on theme with the deck. Yeah, but I run the Red Chain, so... 
So. She's like the only card, the great zero is the only card in Angel Feathers. Is that not part of the ride chain? Um. No, I have to no, stop playing the game because I don't understand ride chains. Well, no, it's just <laughs> there's two there's two other options for starting Vanguard for uh for D not D please for uh um for Angel Feather if you don't use Miracle Feather Nurse. So it's just you're not gonna get the ride chain without her. Or at least you won't be playing it to its full capacity. Right. So yeah. All right, next one, Dimensional Robo Dylander. He is uh, yeah. our grade one 6K, which is okay stats, a little low. I would have liked him to be at a 7 like Die Mariner. But he Whoa. does something amazing. For Counter Blast 1, he gives all Dimensional Robos plus 4,000. No, he gives another Dimensional Dirty yes, Robo. Yes, another plus. Dimensional Robo, thank you. So 4,000 for one counter blast on drop is not bad in any means. It's you can splash insane. that. You can splash that into any D police deck and get some profit out of it. There is nothing wrong with that card. Period. No. Nothing more to say about it. It's good. Use it. Moving right along. Dimensional <laughs> Road, go you, uh, go Yusha. And what is what is there to say about him? He's the start of the ride train. He's the start of the ride. Well, we. Daisha's not really a ride chain so much as it is a bizarre power vacuum, like, whatchamacallit, uh, risers. Eh, yeah, I'll give you that one. But either way... Anyways, uh, I like him because even though he can be moved out, he's one of the very few guys that says when you ride him, you don't have to. And that makes a world of difference to me. Yeah. it's uh, It allows you to build that soul quicker. Um, but... Honestly, why would you not ride him out? Because look at that second effect. She's four rear guards with D-Robo in the card name. Put him in soul. If you have a grade two or a greater vanguard with D-Robo in the name, search your deck for a grade three D-Robo and ride it. First thing, I don't a, like a, that because it gives you too much of a minus, in my opinion. And at the same time, you know, you minus yourself early game, but then you move into your cross ride on turn three. Come on. You can go get Dayu, normal Dayusha and then uh, Superior Ride and then normal Ride over the Dayusha. Yeah, Cross Ride on turn three. That's ridiculous. Yes. So the only other clan I can see doing that is uh, Shadow Paladin with uh, Nightmare Painter. And making I don't make that comparison lightly. That is a really powerful deck. And being able to do that with me, please, is kind of ridiculous. I'm going to have to look up what Nightmare Painter is because I've never heard of that. Nightmare Painter says when you uh, when you call her, uh, you choose a uh, Shadow Paladin in your hand and put it soul. Uh, okay. You do this uh, early game so you don't have to use the extra turn to cross ride. You just throw PBO directly into your soul. And then on turn three, you cross ride. Uh, okay. Well, not cross ride. But you get all the effects of the cross ride because it doesn't say if you rode this on this. It says uh-huh. if this is in the soul. And that's why Nightmare Painter is phenomenal in either PBO or MLB. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And it's an effect that only one other clan ha- – well, two other clans have. Uh, Royal Paladin has Dream Painter, which does the same thing for Dreams. And uh, you have Nightmare Painter, who does it for uh, – for freaking Shadow Paladins, so you can do it with PBD and uh, get that cross ride off turn three. You can't really argue with that. No. Like I said, I think we're kind of split on the Goyusha. I like the fact that he can sit in the soul and make sure you get the limit break. I don't like the minusing. I'll never like minusing my board uh, just for the sake of a superior ride when... I will still get the limit break regardless of any, uh, getting a normal Dayusha or not. Well, let, let me put it this way. If, even if I minus myself, if I hit you hard enough that you never get to punish me for it, does it really matter? But I'm going to get perfect guard you all day. And that's fine, which means I get to spend your perfect guards. And then later I do it again. <laughs> I just go boom, 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 boom. I mean, in case you forgot, Ultimate Daisha is swinging for 15 on its own on the cross ride. So, you know, you can spend your perfect guards, but then you're going to, you know, as soon as your fourth perfect guard is gone, you're gone. This is true. <laughs> I, said, I don't hate the ability. I will most certainly use the ability, but I also like the fact that he 
is one of the very few that is an optional move out. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. I, I won't deny that. It, it does give you the option. To me, it's an unnecessary op- It's an option that I wouldn't use, but it's an option. Next. And I can respect that. Larva be larva be seal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a ride chain starter. What do you want me to say? Uh, he what is, is to say to him about similar it? to the angel feather ride chain. Of, he lets you yeah, look at the top seven. Yeah, he lets you scry seven, and uh, that's standard. Nothing else to say about that. He's a standard ride chain starter. He's not special in that in any case. He's not he special. Just, he's good. We like him. He's good. What is there to say about him? He starts a ride chain. Uh, good stuff. Next, interdimensional ninja Sukikage. Ninja. Uh, he's a space ninja. He is auto ability vanguard rear guard. Whenever he is boosted by a D police, he gets two thousand till the end of battle, making him. He's uh. Your third I'm starting choice. to see. A, oh, I'm starting to see a lot of parallels between Angel Feather and D police because Angel Feather has this effect in um. What is it? Uh, what is her name? I forget. Um, Pulse Wave Angel. Yes. Pulse, Pulse Wave Angel has the same effect. And if you haven't noticed a lot of parallels by now, you're not paying attention. <laughs> uh, basically, listeners. I still don't like him over Lady Justice. I think Lady oh, Justice is far better than he is. And and I can't I can't hate you on that. They both have their uh, their perks. Uh, so, yeah. The only reason I'm saying that is because Sukikage has to be boosted. To get his power, Lady Justice just has to swing. And I, I, I feel you on that one. Next. But I guess they, they both have their advantages. Cosmic Mothership. Um, 8K, 2 grave, that lets you counterblast one, put something, put the top guard into your damage zone. End of turn, let put a card from your damage zone back into your deck. Yeah, which um, um this this ability is really kind of out of place in deep police. Um, I can oh. see its utilities. Uh, in Zeal or Diusha, it fears they don't let you get to your fourth damage, and make you sit there. This card gets you in there. Yeah, and then it gets you out right when you don't need it anymore. Yeah, At the same time, you know, I'm wondering if just part of this clan wasn't just copy pasted from uh. Angel Feather. More yeah. and more. Yeah. I mean, it lets you get your triggers back into your deck. It lets you achieve your your ride, but honestly, he's not... This is not in any of my decks. The only other thing we can ask is Bushy Road, why you copy Independence Day? Hey, that's some cool art. You, you shut your mouth. <laughs> that is some cool art. I did not dispute the coolness of the sword. I'm just asking Aunt Bushy Road why you copying an Independence Day. Out of all the things you question them copying, you question them copying Independence Day, which was actually a pretty good movie. I love Independence Day. So why is it a problem? I'm not saying it's a problem. I'm just saying why you copying Independence Day, Bushy Road. Yeah, well, <laughs> why, why? Hey, Bushy Road, why you copy? Uh, why you copy Tamika Rescue Hero with uh, our next card, Cosmic Rider? Hey, that segue. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. You really should edit this episode. No, no, it's, it's unedited. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh gosh, I'm terrible. Um, I am totally not the person I said I was at the beginning of the episode. Um, yeah. Anyway, Cosmic Writer. Um, it's, it's, it's like a playful jab at Common Writer. They even sound similar. Yes, he could be also mistaken for the only card ever to exist in Common Rider, who's in this case with the moon, but Black Rex Adam. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. So he's showing that I'm a giant token nerd. Oh, and I am too. I just, I'm just i not huge on RX. One of my buddies is like obsessed with it, but I don't get it. Black don't get Superior like, RX in every single way. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, you know, all, all I can think of when I think of RX is Mask Rider. Moving along. Oh, <laughs> that was long! <laughs> um, I, when he's placed on the rear guard, someone, another one of your D-Police gets 2,000. He's... You splash him into Zeal. Or not Zeal, you splash him into, uh... Enigman. Moving on. <laughs> that's it. That's all you can that's do with it. him. You put that's him in Enigman. 
You slash him in an eggman. Moving right along. Assault Monster. Are we calling him Gunrock or Gunlock? I keep seeing both translations. Eh, Gunrock makes more sense to me. All right. Uh, 8K Monster. And who... the, fanatic, the fanatic for it is Totsugeki Kaiju Gunroku. So it's clearly, it's clearly supposed to be Gunrock. Okay. Um, AK with an auto vanguard rear guard ability. When he swings, if your opponent's less than 8K, he becomes an 11K. Obviously, he goes in zeal. I don't know what else to tell somebody. Well, um, no, I I disagree. I think this card just has some utility for knocking out your special interceptors and such, because it doesn't give power, it receives power. And Zeal thrives on uh, something giving it power. This card only receives power, and that doesn't really lend itself to any specific strategy. It's just kind of, you know, it's an 11K beater in some situations, and otherwise it's just kind of there. I can see what you're getting at. It's nothing really special. Uh, Honestly, it really doesn't fit all too well in Deep Police, but I can understand why I have it. Um, It's just it's not that big a deal. And if it you doesn't... check out my article over at HenshinJustice.com, you'll see that monsters actually came together to make this beast. And it's they're probably all ugly. Eh, <laughs> he's actually not ugly. too bad. It's, I mean, as far as it goes, you know, for, for art, I mean, it's great art. It's ugly art, and it's supposed to be ugly, so I can appreciate that. You know, he also but... kind of reminds me of Thrash from Ninja Turtles. Little bit. Little bit. All right, so uh, moving right along, yeah? Yep. Eye of Destruction, Zeal. What he up, is Ride your ride chain for grade one for Zeal? Yes, sir. We still have a lot to cover. I had no idea. Oh, God, yes. I'm, like, opening up a bunch more tabs right now, just uh, trying to get ahead of the game. And I'm only now getting to the deep police draw that was in the set. Well, luckily, when we get down to the triggers, we just go draw trigger, stand trigger, heal trigger, go. Oh, yeah, it's it's triggers. So we move on to Dimensional Robo Dimariner. You Soul Blast him, and he powers up uh, Dimension Police Vanguard for 3,000. Obviously, he's meant to go in. Actually, he can go in any of the decks. Yeah, he can go either way. Um, I can see his utility in both decks. Uh, The Daisha deck, of course, just being a a Dimensional Robo. The Zeal deck... Having that utility of um, a 7k booster. Yeah. Here's the problem with putting him in Zeal. How do you get him in Soul when you use Zeal? Exactly. So probably him in Enigman or Zeal or Ayusha. Or not Zeal. I meant to say Enigman. But see, when when you're talking about the ride chain Enigman, how do you get him in the in the Soul? You'll have to uh, break your ride chain to get him in Soul. Because Unless I don't you're know. running a Nigman store, uh, Nigman Reigns uh, deck. Yeah, which um, eh. But either way, um, it's just it's not something that's easy to pull off. I see the utility for it. I just think it makes more sense in a Daisha deck for more, for more than one reason. It does. Yeah. All right, yeah. moving right along, mysterious naval admiral Gogoth. Go- 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 Gogoth. Yeah. And uh, here, here we see somebody who was clearly recruited from the Aqua Force. Um, really, I called him as General Zol from Common Rider V3. Uh, I can kind of give you Zol, but he's a he's a, a ship captain, so you know. Uh, he is similar to the. Uh, oof, long time since I've seen this card. All my news are from Nova Grappler. When you block with him, what does you come back to your hand to block with? It has to hit, of course. Um, yeah. And uh, Angel Feather has that as well uh, in the form of a puppy. It's a useful little puppy. Well, we really do get a lot from Angel Feathers, don't we? Yep. I'm, this is just a slightly reskinned Angel Feather clan, honestly. As much as I hate to put it that way, most of the effects come from Angel Feather. Moving on, the psychic uh, psychic gray when he boosts a uh, depletes when their power is three thousand or less he becomes a ten k. When the, the opponent's power is eight thousand or less, thank you. He boosts for ten. Um, and you know, same same story as before. Gun rock, etc. Uh, nothing much to say. 
Yeah, I mean, you can stick them behind anybody. No, no, you gotta stick them behind the Vanguard. Um, yeah, he goes in zeal. Yeah, pretty much. And even then, you know, uh, he's not really gonna excel in zeal because he has the same problem Gunrock does. Um, basically, it doesn't give power, it, re- it receives power. Yeah, I don't even run him in my zeal deck. I'm still running, uh,. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Daisy. Over yeah. him. Yep, I hear you. Hear you on that one. Right, next, Speedster, which wasn't in the hey, Japanese they... version he called Speedstar? Um, Supido Suta. Uh, it could go either way. Okay. Um, and, and they totally took it from Kamen Rider uh, Dragon Knight. Yes. Um... When he's playing the rear guard, your dealies choose someone else on dealies and the 2000. Um, go in any of the decks. Uh, yeah. Obviously, um, Nick Man, he, I he, have met a two of them. He's excellent, Nick Man. Mm-hmm. I have met a two well, of them. My bad splash. Show. He's not a bad splash. No. Um, he's he's not something I'd run in fours unless you're cons- unless you're running a Nick Man. Um. Otherwise, I mean, he's just kind of a nice little utility card. There's not much to say there. I mean, if I sit behind uh, Ultimate Dayusha while he's got full effects going on, there, he's already sitting at 17. Critical well, So, you know, swing for 23, have fun. Yes, sir. That sounds like a good time to me. All righty. We're getting close to just saying what triggers are. We got Fighting Saucer who is the Grade 1 version of Cosmic Mothership. He, they have the exact same effect. It's just a Grade 1 6K with Counter Blast 1. Yeah, which, um, interesting, uh, interesting, very... Not much you can do with it at Grade 1, though. No, um, I guess yeah. it has a bit more utility than Grade 2. Only only because it's, um... Counter Blast 1 is just a Counter Blast 2. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And Warrior of Destiny Die. He is uh, Spark Kid Dragoon's clone. But um, he was... Yay, Die. I'm, I'm wondering what his story is. I wonder if there's no lore on him. So, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. That's very I would obviously... say with the belt buckle and the thing, he transforms into uh, Grander. Well, that would make that would make sense to me too. But if uh, you know, first of all, with the name Die, I mean, it seems that he's supposed to be you know doing Dayusha or something, becoming Dayusha. But if he was, then Dayusha would be referenced somewhere in his text. You know, I just had this horrible reference that he's the headmaster for Dayusha. The the pilot. Yes. Even though Dayusha is huh. supposed to be fully a fully sentient robot. I still see him well, getting in the cockpit somewhere. So were the, so were the uh, go on, Mecca's. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. Uh, go. All right, now for the quick and easy, quick and easy part. Gem monster draw trigger. Yeah, it's it's just vanilla draw. Um, Noise monster fan trigger. Uh, the sectional monster Kaizen. Heal. Uh, of course, the heal. And Die Battles is actually the one with the effect. It's uh, from the soul you can put in a drop zone and give a deep police vanguard plus three. Uh, pretty standard. Nothing much to say there. He's it, there to sit it there is. and get stuck to the soul via the Go Yusha effect. Yep. Nothing else to say about that. Okay, on to Aquaforce. Yep. Which uh, Aquaforce, oddly enough, being a bi- supposed to be the biggest clan in this set, actually has only 20 cards as opposed to the Deep Least 26 and the New Nectar 24. Um, I found that kind of interesting. Um, thought, but, you know, Bushy Road would throw us a few more with that. Well, that's because so, you're getting another boost almost immediately next month, so... Yeah, and you're probably right on that one, but, you know, for the English format, it doesn't really make sense because a month between formats isn't a big deal. No. Nah. Yeah, I'm waiting for us to slow down so we can actually, you know... You know, do some uh, fortune telling on new formats. I think we're supposed to be seeing our next full set in either September or August, I believe, is when we're supposed to be getting set 10. 
Yeah. Which would mean, if we do it right, that would mean, I would believe September, I mean, August will get us our liberators and our eradicators. Starters. Yeah. All right, back to the deep, please, so I'll let you go down the list this time. Oh, wonderful. I didn't realize it was my turn. Okay. Um, so we're doing uh, AQF right now, right? Let yes. me um, open up a few tabs. Um, if you don't mind, you know, talking so we don't have dead air, it's going to take me a minute to open up a few tabs. We never have dead air. We have awkward silences. Which is never still dead air. It's it's dead air, dude. Okay. If you're so, not talking, it's dead air. But see, I can hear dead air. I see dead air. Actually, that's kind of bad. Um, let me think here. Can, can we have dead air instead? <laughs> <laughs> I warned you. Oh, you did not warn me it would be that bad. Uh, okay. we, will not, we will not be covering the starter deck stuff because this is purely set review and... Honestly, we're trying to get through this done because it's a work night for both of us. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff going on. So uh, we're going to start right at the top. Uh, Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom, grade 3, 11k base. And uh, he comes in triple wear and SP. He's a limit breaker. Uh, when he attacks the Vanguard, it is the fourth battle of the turn or more. And to tell the end of the battle, he gets plus 5,000 power and an auto effect. Counterblast 1, when this unit's attack hits, you can pay the cost. What do you do? Draw a card and choose one opponent to regard and retire it. And, of course, being a lord, if he has an, if there's a non-AQF Vanguard or Rearguard, he's minus 2. So, yeah. He's uh, he's not bad. He's, he's kind of vicious. Counterblast 1, uh, draw and uh, snipe a Rearguard. That's actually kind of ridiculous. Yes. All he has to do is hit. All he has to do is hit. Which and at the end of the day, you're plusing three off of one attack. And for the waiting one in the stream for the crossfire, just wait 30 days, people. Eight years quicker please, than please. you think. The word crossfire is just in my head nowadays. I'm so sick of hearing the word crossfire. No, okay. I, I really can't offer too much because I totally got this set just for the D police. Um, my friends at the, which will be with me on the next episode, they're the big one, uh, well, one of them, uh, torn between his love of Aqua Force and uh, the cutesy, uber, uber cutesy Neo Nectars. But, you know, he's still getting two basils from me because I owe him. Yep. On to the next card. Okay, one second. Something just happened on Facebook that uh, I'm actually getting out to uh, Keith Justice right now because uh, JDF made a post that I think is very relevant. Anyway, different podcast entirely. Uh, the next card we're looking at is Hydro Hurricane Dragon, grade 3, 10k base, uh, triple rare and SP. He's a limit breaker as well. Uh, a few counter blasts too. It's an act ability. Until the end of the turn, he's plus 3,000 power and gains the auto ability. When this unit's attack hits the Vanguard, if it's the fourth turn of the ba battle of the turn or more, retire all opponents' rear guards. Completely, it's scary for a completely different reason than, uh, uh, bleh, uh Maelstrom. It's, it's scary. And yet he's only a $3 triple rare. Uh, and that's ridiculous. He is worth much more than that. Which, by the way, I do have three of them for you, Ed. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, he's good. I like him. Yeah, and uh, he, there's nothing wrong with using him or Maelstrom. Uh, he's, he's solid. Yeah. There is nothing else to say. That's solid. And like uh, I said before, guys, I really don't know too much about uh, Aquaphor, so if I'm not in vocals, I was with the police. That's why. Well... And I'm, you know, I'm kind of trying to uh, check out uh, Aqua Force. I'd like to play it and uh, check out what it is uh, it's all about. I played the uh, structure, and uh, I liked it. So uh, I I don't know what to say. I like I liked the structure, so a buddy who bought a couple copies of it gave me all his extras and some of his extras from Set 8. So. Nice. Yep. Yeah. He just gave me a... 
Okay, next we've got... Storm Sorry, Rider. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, it's cool. I wasn't saying anything of, of value, actually. Um, next card is Storm Rider Basil. Uh, Storm Rider Basil. Uh, 8K base. Uh, grade 2. Uh, triple rare SP. Uh, he's got an auto effect on the rear guard when he attacks a vanguard. If you have knock course vanguard, it's the first battle of the turn. He's plus 2,000 power until the end of the battle. And at the beginning of the close step of that battle, choose another aqua force rear guard in the same column and exchange positions. Um, it's very important to run cards like this in the aqua force deck. It lets you get to those uh, fable force attack or betters. Um, lets you reuse those effects that happen on attack three, attack four, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're very important. And, and uh, this is what the Storm Knight, sub, uh, Storm Rider archetype does, right? It allows fourth battles. Yeah, it, it allows fourth battles very easily. Um, no problem at all. Okay, so he's pretty much your whole key card to getting Maelstrom and Hydro Hurricane to work. Yeah, he's he's a key card. He's very important. A run four. <laughs> nice. All right, what's next? Uh, let's see. Let's find out. Um, we have next Tier Knight Valeria. She's a grade 2 9K uh, double rare. And when she hits a Vanguard on the Vanguard or Rear Guard Circle, give an Aqua Force Vanguard. It's the fourth battle of the turn or more. Choose opponent's Rear Guard and retire it. Which means um, you hit those Stand Triggers, you hit those, uh, those Storm Riders. She becomes very scary. Because uh, all she has to do is hit, and you lose rear guards. Um, mm. Pretty pretty solid double rare. I agree with that rarity. It's pretty potent. Yep. It's potent. It's scary, and uh, it's, yeah, it is what it is. Onwards. Yeah, onwards. Um, Emerald Shield Passel. Yeah, it's a perfect card. Doesn't he get reprinted next set, too? Um... He gets reprinted in set 11. That's it, set 11. And I think I like that art better. If that's the art that's showing on the webpage, let me check. Because he has, I think, two arts. So English, yes, he does have two arts. And I think I actually like the second one a little bit better. Okay. But yeah, that's kind of cool that it's got different art. It also doesn't have the, uh, the Sentinel mark on the card for set 8. So... A little bit disappointing. Well, no, he has Sentinel on set 8. Yeah, he has Sentinel, but he doesn't have uh, the special uh, mark on the card. Like, after, sir, I think, set 9, they add a special mark on the card. The big gold shield? Yeah, the gold shield. No, he's got it. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, he didn't have it in the picture on the uh, the wiki. Maybe yeah. it was the Japanese version of the picture. Anyway, uh, Storm Rider Diamantes is next. Grade 3, 9k uh, base. He, uh, if he attacks the Vanguard, if he's... Give an Aqua Course Vanguard. If it's first battle of turn, he has plus two thousand and he shifts to uh he shifts column. Uh it's another one of the Storm Riders. It's very important to use him for your uh fourth attacks. Are you going to use him he's only in nine? Uh nine yeah. Days? Because even if he doesn't hit, you are going to uh you're gonna put your opponent on notice for those third and fourth attacks. I mean, even if your opponent doesn't have to guard the 9k, your opponent ends up uh, having to block that fourth attack, so it all evens out. Okay. Uh, it's the way I see it. I mean, right, well, it makes sense to me. Yep. So, should we move on? Yes. Tier Knight Lazarus, grade 2, vanilla 10k. Rare vanilla 10k. I thought they stopped doing rare ten- vanillas. I- Totally okay with the fact that they are doing them again because bling, 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 bling. Everybody's got to have a neck beard for uh, foils. Hey, it, having foils does not make you a neck beard, okay? Like the Bermuda Triangle does. Ooh, I'm going to get haters now. Shout out to the North American group. Oh god! No, no. We, trust me. We know what we know. A name and a phrase that gets them totally. Started when, if we want to get that reaction. We won't get into that though. Onward. Fatal trigger? Huh? Fatal trigger? No, no. J- just keep going. <laughs> Shout out to Fatal Trigger. What up, bro? I'll see you on Friday. Um, okay, next we've got uh, Aquabest Dracakid. Uh, he's a starter vanguard. He's a grade zero. 
and when another Aqua Force rides him, you may call him the rear guard. And uh, as an axe ability, you can put him in soul. Choose an Aqua Force, give it plus 1,000 power. And uh, when that unit's attack hits a Vanguard, if you have an Aqua Force Vanguard, the number of battle rings that turn is four or more, draw a card. So he uh, he makes some, he makes a lot of your cards pretty scary, uh, just for the fact that they can make you draw. And drawing is a very potent effect in Vanguard. Very potent. Okay. That nothing? Uh, yeah, nothing. He seems like your typical. He seems like a really good starting vanguard. Yeah, he's, he's solid. Um, I see more people using the cadet. So. It is yeah, I don't have one Leon used with the little pitchfork. Um, isn't that uh, isn't that the one for trial deck? It may be. The the vanilla five K. I think so. Yeah, but that's just because yeah. he was adorable. Yeah, he's in the trial deck. I think. Did we skip Torpedo Rush Dragon and Storm Rider Eugene? Uh, I, don't know. I didn't see him. Huh. My bad, I guess. Uh, okay. Oh, that makes it different on your list. Well, and I'm just using. The wiki uses the official card numbering. Oh, that's what this is. Okay. Okay. Um, next, we've got uh, Titan of the Pyroxene Mine. He's a grade three ten K and when he's boosted by Aqua Force, he's plus two thousand power. Nothing really to say there. No. He just it's extra power for being boosted. Cool story, bro. Um Deep Distancy Advisor Vasilis. Hmm, excuse me. Ten K grade three. Choose card from your hand and discard it. When his attack hits, if you have an Aqua Force Vanguard, you may pay the cost for you to draw a card. He's a drop and draw. Nothing else to say about that. Moving right along. Yeah, I say I don't like you because he's a grade three. That's very rarely a grade three ability. Nowadays, it's more related to the grade ones. Yeah, well, and uh, I'm okay with it being a grade three because it lets you keep up a little bit of extra pressure should you need it in the end game. Um, I mean, it's not bad. I'd use it. Look. I'd use it. I would. Um, okay, next we've got Veteran Strategic Commander. He's an 8K grade two. Uh, you counterblast one as an auto ability. When you see this place in Vanguard or Rearguard, if you have an Aqua Force Vanguard, you may pay. If you do, top part of your deck into the damage zone. At the beginning of your end phase, choose a card from the damage zone, return to the deck, and shuffle. Uh, weren't we talking about, uh, Angel Feather a little bit ago? We were. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Angel Feather? There it is again. Yep. How you Actually, doing? I think almost everybody... In this set, every, all the clans featured in this set, even the ones that only had like two or three cards, got their own versions of this card. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to move on. Okay. Uh, well, well Supply Feet, Kari and Maru. Um, it's a grade 2 7K. And when it hits a Vanguard, if you have four more Aqua Force rear guards, you draw a card. Um, I think it's uh, a little underpowered for for what it does, even considering what it does. I think it needs to be an 8K to make it viable. Otherwise, it's just kind of a sitting duck. All it's going to do is force out a shield. That's about it. It's not special. And honestly, it's underpowered. That's my opinion on it. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing keeping a lot of my friends from running because it's 7,000. Yep. And uh, so moving right along to Tier Knight Theo, who is a grade 1 8K booster, who, uh, as a side note, Got a reprinted Fighters Collection 13 or 2013 as a triple rare. However, he is common. He is only common now. But yeah, I I like his triple rare artwork. It's or his triple rare foiling. It's really nice. It's uh, lots of squares and it makes the art look like really pop. Um, Nice. Yeah. Otherwise, just a vanilla AK. Moving right along. Uh, Stream Trooper. Uh, it's a 6k grade 1, and uh, has an auto ability on the rear guard. When it's, ha- when its attack hits the vanguard, well, on the turn that it boosted, uh, you may return to your hand. It's just the, uh, it's, it's the puppy. Yep, it's my little Yep. And now we are actually into triggers. Uh, stand um, trigger in. I, we're missing Ultra Cadet Eric. I'm... Ah, uh, I see. Reliable I'll, strategic I, commander. Uh, yes, I, I see them. I'm adding to them to the list right now. 
Storm Rider Eugene and Torpedo Rush Dragon. You still got before we go draw stand. I haven't seen uh Eugene or uh I can cover Eugene Torpedo if you want to. Uh Oh, I see them now. Eugene and Torpedo Rush Dragon. Okay, they got skipped between Lazarus and Draco Kids somehow. Okay, so they're on the list, but I'll uh I'll go back to the comments for now. Uh, yeah. Rebel Strategic Commander, kind of launch one when it's placed on Vanguard or Rear Guard. If you have Aqua Force, you pay cause we do. Tom Carter your deck into the damage zone, then at the end phase, choose one and shuffle back in. It, it's pretty standard. So you guys get two of these things? Yeah, they get two of them. Weird. Yep. Uh, Militia Intelligence, crit trigger. Uh, Storm Rider Eugene, grade one. He has the Storm Rider ability that we talked about earlier, where when he attacks, if he's the first battle to turn, you shift. Kind of cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, then we got Torpedo Rush Dragon, which now that I'm seeing him, I'm remembering him. Grade one. And he boosts an Aqua Force. We have an Aqua Force in Vanguard. Number of battles this turn score more. It's plus 3,000 power. So he becomes a 9k booster on, on fight four. Uh, enemy Seeking Penguin Soldier. He's a... Or Enemy Seeking... Enemy Seeking Seagull Soldier. I'm being his yeah. artwork. He is clearly not a single... That is a penguin. Yeah, that's, that's a penguin. That is quite clearly a penguin. Uh, um, but he's a stand trigger. Whatever. Uh... Uh, somehow I opened up Eugene twice and Torpedo Rush Dragon twice, so I guess I did have them on the list and they just got pushed on my uh, on my tabs. And looks like we finally got User Cadet Eric. Yes, Eric. Let me pull him up real quick because I think I accidentally closed him somehow. There he is. Come on. Hurry up, computer. You're on Linux. You should be faster than this. Uh, Officer Cadet Eric. Uh, starting Vanguard. Uh, when another Aqua Force rides him, you can call him to Rear Guard. And as an axe, you can counterblast one, put him in soul, and uh, scry top five for a grade three. Reveal and show. Uh, reveal and place an hand. Uh, pretty pretty good. I think this is exactly what they uh, they needed. That will be the running. Yep, it's, uh, it's what most people are running. From what I've seen. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. I believe that we reached our halfway point on the set. Yay! And uh, we're halfway through the set, having only covered two clans. Got Not to mention all the ones with the little clan specials we get here and there. Yeah, Great Nature got four cards in this clan. I don't get it. Why did they get four cards in this clan? Or in this, this set? Uh, but they were cards that were needed, according to one of my friends that runs it. Yeah, well, they, uh... They got it. Whatever it was. Yep. That's, he was that's a, thing. Platypus, a bison, a cockatiel, and a lion. Uh huh. Well, they got they got things. It was a parrot. It was up by one. There's a parrot. Yeah, there's a parrot. Uh, so, yep. what do we think about? These two clans, this far. I think Deep Lease got what it needed to become really good. Yeah, Deep Lease has multiple uh, multiple options now. It's not just the uh, boring Ultraman. I mean, um, Enigmans. Um, I'm going to get shot for that one. No, because you're <laughs> probably right, but... Uh, no, they don't just have that one. Uh, they don't just have the one uh, option builds. now. Yep, they have uh, four. We have four, four decks. They have four decks. Uh, Dayusha, and Eggman, Zeal, and... Uh, Storm and Rain. Oh, yes. Rain they actually can be quite threatening if you run it all stands with uh, Miracle Beauty. Yeah, Miracle Beauty makes it very scary. Uh, but as far as it goes... Uh, Aqua Force is great. It needs a little bit more to uh, get up to speed as everybody else, which is to say it needs its cross ride. And I hate to sound like a broken record on that one, but at the end of the day, mostly dominant decks in the format are cross rides. Yes. And I kind of hate it, but it's the truth. But it's coming. It's it's there. It's a thing. 
Um, there's not much I can do or say about it, so it's one of those things where I just have to deal with it. Says Bushy Road. We got about a month before we get to see Glory Maelstrom, so. Yep, and I can't wait for that bandwagon. Because people are already jumping off the Set 8 bandwagon. I don't and understand the bandwagons. Because people like to spend money, I guess. Yeah, have you seen some of the pricing they got for some of this stuff on the North American side? Yeah, and a lot of it's high prices, so I ignore it. High prices? Some of it's just absurd. Yeah, hype prices. Uh, hype. Hype prices. No. Hype, hype, hype. And that's why, you know, you buy at the beginning of the set, sell it all, and then buy the deck you want to build three weeks later when it's cheap. And, yeah. But, either way, um, you know, it's it's good stuff. Uh, Aquaforce is good stuff. It's got a lot of solid abilities, but... It's just not quite top tier yet. It it might happen. You never know. But um, I don't see it topping anything, really, other than maybe some locals and one or two regionals. Aqua Force or D-Police? Aqua Force. Aqua Force. I can see D-Police being a sleeper. Especially Zeal and Ayusha. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, Daisha. I love Daisha. I'm so I've got both of them done. Now I don't have to worry about anything until Yeah, June. lucky you. Lucky you, mister. I just bought four boxes. And I said, you know how many packs I bought in three months? You know, if you're going to mock me, get the number right. Six boxes. Excuse me, princess. <laughs> it's just, I, I bought one pack in three months. So, I've been saving for a while for this set, though, so, you know. Yeah, I hear you. Because, I mean, I think I'm only going to get four boxes of the next set, and the only reason I'm even investing that set is so I can get my uh, blood deck. Uh-huh. And then it's hardcore save mode because I really want my eradicator deck. Yeah. But I will not be like everybody else. I'm going to be the bad player. I'm not going to run Descendant. I'm going to run uh, Gauntlet Buster. Yeah. Everybody's like, Joe, That's a you're a horrible player. Everybody's going to run Descendant because it can stand itself. It's like, and I'm going to retire your entire field and catch you with the 50k uh, critical 5 uh, card. Yep. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. You're absolutely free to tell me if I'm a, still a horrible player for not hopping out of the Descendant bag, bandwagon. Oh, just starting to be the new Fraser Vanguard bandwagon. Uh, it's it's been uh, it's been around for a while. I've been using the word since set one, when everybody was jumping on the Royal Paladin bandwagon, as if there was any other bandwagon. I was going to say, was, was there any other wagon that I should know about at that point? Um, Oracle Think Tank. Well, yeah, um, there is a, there was Oracle. I think Amaterasu is still the most valuable card in the set, other than maybe an SP Alfred. I thought. Um, wait, Tsukiyomi came out what set? Set one. It was set one. Yep. I didn't it was set one. Set to last December on uh, the turn set. So. Yep, set one. So, uh, yeah. Yep. Oh, I love people over on the North American side. So I'm sitting there complaining until I pulled a crappy SP Diusha, but he doesn't care because it's had no maelstrom in it. Yeah, it's the bandwagon effect. I pulled an SP, QQ, QQ. Yeah. I, I pulled an SP. I mean, it was uh, main of the rainbow wood. Oh, nice. The only SP I've ever pulled is Alfred. And so, it, one of the most expensive SPs ever. Yep. I sold it when it was at one of its higher prices, actually. I sold it pretty much right after I got it. Good on you. Yeah. 
Well, we have an SP hunter in our group, so uh, he gives he gives good prizes. Oh, that's good. He gives good prizes. So he's typically very fair. Shout out to Defiant Freedom. Check him out on YouTube. He's he does not only uh, Vanguard, he does Gundams as well. And he's also the brother of Asian Persuasion, if you pay attention to the Yu-Gi-Oh! community at all. No, I'm not much of a Yu-Gi-Oh! player. I used to be, and then when the meta went to crap during that transitional period between... Uh, Five Ds and Z. Z- yeah, where, that, where they just decided to let the stupid stuff come back. It's like, nope, I'm out. Yeah, well, and you know, I just, I really didn't like the Exceed command, uh, mechanic. It's, you know... It's just like, hey, we made this mechanic to uh, kill the the format so we can make more money. Okay, thanks. That's pretty much what it's always going to be about, though, unfortunately. Yep. It's uh, That's Konami's policy. It's like, hey, how can we squeeze more money out of the players today? It, it reminds me of some kid on a Facebook group called Van Gods who was complaining about the new... Uh, the new restriction list for Japan saying, oh, all Bushy Road's doing is making us waste our money. And my comment was, it's your own fault for buying cards secondhand if your deck is now half the value because it got gipped. That's your fault. And then he, he, made, he went on this whole tirade about how, oh, no, it's just Bushy Road being greedy. I'm like, um, dude, uh, no, <laughs> they don't make any money off the secondary market, so why should they care about it? You know? So what are you well, working on for your article? For so what are you working on next for uh, our? I guess we can call it sponsoring website, offshoot website, main website. HJU. You know, you know, we just kind of I just kind of came into this because he said make a podcast. We'll see what it's like. Yeah. Well, and um, HJU, I've got an article in the works about the Power Ranger CG. Of course, I will be bringing more exclusive previews to HJU. So keep up with that. Uh-huh. Um, I'll I'll have some uh, some news to share with them quite quite soon, depending on uh, what I get out of Bandai and uh, some other people I'm talking to. But uh, I will have more exclusive previews for HJU, and as well as a strategy article. I'm looking at breaking down the Mystic Force, uh, looking at down looking at breaking down Mystic Force and trying to figure out where its niche fits best. Because there are a couple of really good builds that Mystic Force can benefit. Or, as just a pure build, can Mystic Force survive on its own without decking out? Uh, so, it's, it's all things I'm looking at. I, I really like Mystic Force. I really like the effects they gave it. Um, so, I'm going to be looking at Mystic Force first. And then, maybe if I get enough interest in SPD, because I have a personal interest. But as far as interest in writing a strategy article for it, uh, I'm all right for SPD. Yeah. Well, I've been asked to write weekly reviews on Attack on Titan. Uh-huh. I don't know how to do that because are you watching the series at all? Which series? Attack on Titan. Can't say that I have. Okay, well, the main character just was killed and eaten in Episode 5, so I don't know how this show's going to go. Yeah, you got to love when that happens. Um... Keith is asked wants me to do a whole wrap up on Dimension Police, so uh-huh. you know, we're doing a, we're seeing a lot of Dimension Police. Yeah, uh, just whenever we get around to it, um, is, writing is kind of iffy for me at the moment. It's mostly a weekend thing. He also wants me to do a set review, written set review for all of set eight. Yeah. Because apparently Vanguard is actually starting to pick up on the site, or rather Bushy Road stuff, because of Fire Leon, and uh, people are actually starting to pay more attention to Vanguard now. Well, tell you what, um, if uh, if you guys want to check out my team's website, team316.wordpress.com, I will uh, I'll do some uh, some clan breakdowns and uh, see what we can come up with. Uh, maybe we can get HJU to uh, to participate with those because I've been looking. We've been getting a decent amount of traffic thanks to uh, our sponsors, Ultra Pro, um, and you know just some promotion by me, but not getting a whole lot of comment action. So that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's you know? like direct over to our podcast. 
apparently. Yeah, well, <laughs> and you give me the link, and I will post it to the 316 page, which will, which will likely uh, get a little bit of coverage from Ultra Pro. So, yeah. But, yeah, that's what I've got going right now as far as uh, for HJU. So look out for that, guys. Yep. Uh, also look out for an announcement regarding the ACG as far as um, the community goes quite soon. Um, at the very least, you'll want to uh, pay attention because I might have some stuff to give away. Ooh, stuff. Yeah, that Bondi is my friends. I had friends like that. So do I, honestly. I wish that, you know, they'd come over and hang out. You know, we can go to the bar, have a couple beers, and maybe kick someone, make them explode. I mean, that sounds like a good time to me, but I guess Bandai just doesn't want to hang out. It's probably insurance. I don't think they can handle all the explosions. Oh, sure they can. They have they have insurance on lock. On lock. I mean, yeah, explosions everywhere. I'm looking at someone build right now for Nurakami. It's so bad. Nurakami? Yes. Nurakami. You heard me. The new clan? You heard me. It's 1040 at night. Oh, yeah, it is. I forgot we're on the same time. Yeah. Which, uh, what part of the Midwest do you in again? Oh, wait, no. Don't tell me that on the air. Um. <laughs> no, I can. I'm over in Nashville. Oh, Nashville? Oh, okay. I'm going to Iowa at the end of this month for uh, Team League Regionals, uh, which, by the way, Iowa, we're coming to your state to take your money. Just saying. <laughs> we're coming to your state to take your place to Florida. Just saying. <laughs> well, hopefully you guys do. Oh, dude, we, we robbed uh, – the Wichita crew went to Leavenworth, Kansas for their uh, qualifiers for stand-up challenge, and we stole them. So, yeah, we're coming to your store to steal your prizes. Again, more power to you. Dude, 316 is taking over. Y'all don't even know. Uh, I'm not going to use this to advertise my team. I'm sorry. Shout out to 316. Anyway. No, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you can, your co-host, you can do as many shout outs as you want. Dude, if, if we, I'd be here shouting out all night if I did that. This podcast would not be listenable. <laughs> You're assuming it's listenable now. Hey, it's hey. I love my voice. I don't know about you, man. I am my voice, told I have uh, a voice for radio and a voice for mime. <laughs> oh gosh. So, but yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to that. So, if any of you guys, uh, any of you Vanguard players, are actually in Iowa, uh, I will be at JCD and Hobby. On the 25th, and I will be available for games since I am not on a winning team because I judged once again. And I will be nowhere because I was neither on a winning team, I was not part of any team, and I did not participate. But there's always next year. Well, and there's always LCQ as well. You're assuming I have the ability to travel. Ooh, wait. Wait, are you, you – Iowa has some te- – or uh, Tennessee had some teams that qualified, right? Yes. Aren't, aren't any of them going to Iowa? Um, I'll have to ask. Yeah, find out for me. Let me know what regional they're going to because maybe you can tag along with them and I can meet them. I can, we can hang out. Uh, the problem with that is, is work has been hit by the sequester. Yeah. And – I had to make the hard decision of a when paying with my family to see my sister. I can't go anywhere all the remainder of the year. Really? Yes. It's that bad. That's uh wow. You won't even be able to you know carpool to uh, Iowa. I can't give anybody any extra money. Sell some cards. That's what I keep. Everybody keeps telling me, but you know I I. I I don't eBay. Oh, I'll eBay for you. <laughs> Throw me some cards to sell. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do ten percent. <laughs> okay, okay, nine points, ten percent. We're not nine. getting into percentages and fractions. That's just a bad idea. Right, look, look, I'll I'll, just, I'll I'll give you a break. All right, I'll do twelve percent. <laughs> not going down. Business, right? <laughs> 
But anyway, um, you know, it, it's a matter of you know, uh, but donate plasma, dude. That's what I do. I donate plasma. Donate plasma, get a pack. The, oh, the, you get more money than enough for a pack for donating plasma. I think on that chilling note, of seeing if I can go anywhere. Unfortunately, I can't because Japan. Yeah, Japan. We need that guy from the Crumble team. I need to download that. Goki? Yeah, Goki team. Yeah. I think okay. it says, Ka- no, it's the Kaboom guy in the American oh, the translation. Because oh, I, I think in the, doesn't he in the Japanese version, he just keeps saying Japan over and over again? I don't know, honestly. I don't. Bushiro, if you're listening to this at any point, spring keep back so we can figure out if you saying Japan or not. Kaboom! It's, is his actual name Kaboomy? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I have a good reason for that. I wasn't huge on Team Handsome. I liked the characters. I didn't like them as a group. Ah, yes. Uh, quick thing before we leave. The anime. It's going really good. I really oh, dug it. Yeah, season three is phenomenal. Uh, that is something else I will be writing on. I forgot to say, I am going to go reach way out there and link Ancient Dragons to Kyo Ruger. Oh, nice. Just because half the, half, I mean, they got, got a mirror, they got ink done, they got bird gun. Yeah. They got even Dino Chasers as cards. Yeah. Cool. And they got Alamera, so I sat there and was like, I could write an article linking Vanguard to Kyo Ruger based off the Ancient Dragon deck. Very cool. Which the Ancient Dragon deck is insanely awesome. The fact that you can superior call a grade three on turn one is absolutely nuts. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Baby T. Rex. Ancient Dragon Baby T. Rex says uh, when he is put um, play to the uh, drop zone, he counter plus one and summon Grand Legend. Ooh, nice. So grade three on turn one. Yeah. And it's guaranteed, right? It's almost guaranteed so long as you ride, uh, I think it's Aloe, Ancient Dragon Aloe something. He's, when he comes into play, uh, nerfs somebody, he eats somebody, and he gains 3,000. Yeah. So, ride, move out, chomp, grade three, profit, go. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I want the cover revolver. Everything was got a revolver. That is so it is so cool, perfect. and I want to learn to dance. It's so simple when you break it down. Like, I actually stopped. I took it, like, frame by frame and broke it down. And I was like, that's so easy, but I can't do it. Yeah. I love Kyoto Ryuger, and I'm so behind. Oh, it's going so well. Uh, let me see if I can dick. Well, and I'll just download it from overtime, because, uh... This this computer doesn't like streaming video for some reason. So yeah, I'll just get it from overtime. It is. Yep. You're not telling it has not Gabutira with like shoulder cannons. Mm, let me find out. Let me look at this image. She sent me an image in Skype, guys. That's why you don't know what we're talking about. But uh, to follow along, um. Just look up the card, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. But that is definitely Gabatera, dude. Ancient, Either that or... Ancient Dragon, Tyrannal Legend. Oh, Tyrannal Legend? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, that's Gabatera. I mean, look, they're Either that or it's, Tars gun. Either that or it's a reference to, uh, Sea Ranger. I'm not sure which it is, but I'm saying because of the coloring scheme, where he's got the green, the yellow, and the red, it's Gabatera. Yeah, I could give you that one. Which actually, this deck was actually played the last episode, uh, this week's episode, last week episode. Really good, well done. Love that episode. Still wish they would go through the full game some more, but you know, next week we get to see Rams team go against Aichi's team. It's a rematch between what their name, Sailors do, the Angel Brothers, the oldest of the Triple Bears. Yeah. 
I go know. once again against Naoki. I pray to God he runs Commando Sweep, but it already looks like he's running Armor Break Dragon again. Yeah. Which um, probably means he's going to lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. But, you know, never know. I'm more looking forward to the rematch IT versus Red because you know it's going to happen. And uh, I rather enjoyed the last match, so. I just like the tease yeah. that he gave. It's like, I'm evil. I'm evil. All right, who wants coffee? Coffee. <laughs> well, and I don't think he's evil. I just think, um, you know, he'll he'll go back to the Shadow Paladins, but uh, remember that the Shadow Paladins aren't really, you know, they never were, but they, they aren't really evil anymore. And I guarantee you the Revengers are going to bring a brand new grade three boss we to know the game. Is, actually. We do? Uh, Reve- I do not know his full name, but I do know that it is Mordred. Mordred? Uh, from Arthurian lore, Mordred is the knight that betray- that is sent out, created by uh, an evil sorceress to go kill King Arthur. Oh. Let's see if I can. Interesting. Huh. Well, I don't know what to say about that then. I kind of want to build Revenger. Here it is, Illusion Revenger Mordred Phantom. Okay. I'll send you the link. Right now they only have the pictures of him from the card sleeve, because he's going to be a card sleeve. Uh Uh-huh. So we don't know any of his abilities outside of his name. Okay. Well, that's exciting, I guess. I was kind of hoping that they wouldn't.